Hello, my name is Ben Thompson and I am a free citizen and this is our introductory video for the School of the U.S. Constitution. The purpose of this video series is to help you come to a better understanding of the U.S. Constitution. Now, America has a destiny. The founders saw this and they worked for it, but unfortunately their progeny did not have the same vision that they did. Now, they called this vision, this destiny, Manifest Destiny, which was the, the spreading of the United States from one side of the sea to the other sea. And they did this through invasion and and uh, land secessions. That's not how the founders intended America to be spread. There is a manifest destiny, and this destiny is the way they saw it. It was too small. It only goes from sea to sea, but it was supposed to be from one end of the earth to the other. And it was to never spread by war and destruction as it's spreading right now. The, the founders wanted us to, to spread this idea of liberty through philosophical means. And they believed that when people would see it, that it would um, inspire them and they would have revolutions in their own countries and replace their tyrannical governments with uh, a liberty republics. And unfortunately today we have gone so far from that path that in order for us to fulfill our manifest destiny we have to be able to return back to those principles. Uh, today we are spreading a false philosophy throughout the world and we're calling it democracy. Democracy is not what the US Constitution was about. Democracy is a term used by people who want to have a majority rule situation. That's not what the founders wanted. The founders established a constitutional republic. We call it a democratic republic which means that it's a combination of certain factors and we're going to cover that right now. Now, there are basically three forms of government. Four if you include anarchy, but that's the opposite. It's no government, nothing. And that's not a good idea. Now, the, the other three generally are considered to be um, a de des a despotic system, which includes forms of government like the like monarchy, fascism, uh, tyranny, and it's what it is is that all power is located in one head, usually in the form of a king or some type of ruler. The second uh, form of government is called an aristocracy, which means a rule by elite and an aristocracy is usually where all the wealth is had and that's when those people rule and then finally the third is called a republic or a people's law and that's when the individual um, has a role in government democracy is a Greek term and it was considered to be very negative and means in fact uh, more literally a mob rule meaning that the majority rule and that the majority have all power and that the minority cannot do anything against the majority a constitutional republic is supposed to be a a, a fixed set of law that protects all people equally and that a majority cannot take the rights away from the minority. So those are our three
main uh, types of government and a what ha what the founders did is that they took all three forms of these government and put them together in the hope that it would create something better and it did our we have three branches of government we got the the executive the legislative the judicial and the and the legislative which is made up of the of congress both the house of representatives and the senate is supposed to be the supreme branch it is where the people in the form of a republic are represented in in government the now the the legislative we divide it into two and this provides the, the, the constant a struggle between the two in the hopes of being a check and balance against um, people's tyranny. Democracy is a form of people tyranny, a, ma a majority tyranny. And the two houses are designed to protect against this. Now, we have the Senate, which is a remnant of the old aristocracy form of government. Then we have the House of Representatives, which is the people's law. And so it was hoped by the founders that the aristocracy, which would, um, would be a lot of the elites, would have a lot of the wealth. Um, originally, the Senate was not voted by the people, but by the states state governments voted for them and the aristocracy was supposed to protect the state and the representatives was supposed to protect the people and the two would work something out that's best for the state and what's best for the people by limiting senators to six years for a term it would hope to remove the negative effects of aristocracy which itself uh, delves into tyranny and having that that longer term makes it so that the senator could uh, be more used to their position and do more for the state. Now, in the House of Representatives, the, the representative is has a two-year term, and they can be voted as many times, I believe, as uh, as the people want them in there, and. The reason for this was that so that these people would be more answerable to the people because they're supposed to be representing the people. So that is our combination of a, of a people's law and aristocracy in the legislature. Now, the executive, which is the next branch, is similar to a monarchy. Uh, the the term limit was was set to four years, so that you can to try to take away the advantage of having a, a a long term in that position, which would result in in just establishing a real monarchy. The a lot of the power is taken out of of the executive and kept in the legislative, so it's in the people's hands, and. The, the executive is more like somebody who executes the, the law that the legislature comes up with. And then um, the judiciary, again, is another leftover from the aristocracy. So these three were supposed to work together to create a balance. Now, there, there have been some changes. M m most of the power is, is uh, centralizing into the executive branch, which the founders would have uh, spoken against, because power is supposed to be in the legislative. Another change is that the Senate is now voted by the people. So it's basically 
another group of people's law and without that balance of having the states balancing out the people it leaves room for uh, tyrannical actions to come into play and of course we have this the judiciary the supreme court which are not fighting against these uh, things that are happening. To understand more about the uh, the destiny of the United States, let's take a look through history to uh, to learn more about this. Now, there's basically eight steps. The first step began a long, long time ago in Britain, actually. And this is with the Ang Anglo-Saxon people. And they had what they called the People's Law. Which law? And we'll talk more about this uh, at a later time. But the, the Anglo-Saxon law, which was a form of People's Law, was, was identical to the People's Law that is written in the, the, the Old Testament of the Bible. And uh, with, some, with some minor variations, but it's basically the same law. And that's the, the foundation of people's law. Now, this uh, system became corrupted because they wanted a king to, uh, during a time of war, one of the chiefs would take all power, and you know how, how that always turns out, um, never gets taken away, and they ended up with a monarchy. And uh, that happened in the, the 8th century AD, when that was uh, taken away and replaced. Now, the founders knew this, and understood it, and imitated it in the United States. But uh, continuing on, the second step is what we call the ruler's law. And this was from the kings of uh, Britain, and uh, especially the, the Normans, the Norman conquest in 1066. Uh, William the Conqueror subjugated the English people under him and established a royal dynasty. And so this created the monarchy in Britain that we know of today. And uh, the suffering and poverty of the people following the Norman Conquest became loathsome and repelling frame of reference in the minds of the English to motivate them in striving to regain their lost freedom, which led to step three. Now there was a king named King John and he was a very brutal king. And so a bunch of of uh, barons and other nobility banded together and fought against the king and forced him to sign a document that we call the Magna Charter in on a June fifteenth in the year twelve fifteen. Now the Magna Carta uh, refers to the rights of barons and the towns and the churches and it makes uh, reference to the, the English freemen and uh, one of the things that the founders invoked were the Magna Charta and its right for free men and this was the first step in reclaiming people's law in the world. Step four became parliamentary power and what a, what this is basically it's a form of legislature which is similar to um, actually our, our uh, two house system is similar to the parliament front in Great Britain and what this the purpose of this was to uh, reduce the the power of the monarchy and to allow the a voice of the people to be represented 
provided a bargaining tool to regain some of the lost powers of the people, to limit tyrannical powers. The parliament regained the right to have no taxation without the approval of the people's representatives. They also established the principle that there would be no laws imposed on the people that had not been approved by the parliament. Finally, the parliament secured the right to impeach the arrogant and abusive officers of the king whenever it could be shown that they had violated the law in the exercise of their high office. This development of a legislature was the next step for the for freedom. Now, this, this the king still had a powerful role in this, but this became changed on step number five when the parliament became supreme. And um, this happened in between nights between seventeen fourteen and seventeen sixty. And the parliament began having more power. And and the prime minister basically ran uh, things over in the country. And uh, the office of the king became symbolic although it was still very important. And uh, this brought to Great Britain a limited monarchy and allowed the legislature to exercise un practically unlimited power subject only to the restraints which it determined to oppose upon itself which became necessary through circumstances. This executive and administrative self-determination is, uh, th is this part of the step of freedom. And the parliamentary system was divided up into two groups. You had the House of Lords, which was the aristocracy, and the House of Commons, which was the people. And this, this is the idea that the founders had in coming up with a two-house system. They thought of a one-house, but decided that the two better, so that the two can balance each other out, because this is where all the power is supposed to be. And so these two houses uh, arguing with each other is supposed to protect the freedom of the people. Now the sixth step is the Articles of Confederation and State Supremacy. The Articles of Confederation were actually before the U.S. Constitution, and but it was a it was a, a flawed system. What happened was was that there was too much. Uh, all all the power was was distributed among the the states in the United States after the Revolution, and this uh, the the central government, the federal government did not have enough power to act, and the way the Articles of Confederation were written made it nearly impossible to change the rules and stuff like that, and so the people, of uh, the founders decided that this was a flawed system, and so they went back to the drawing board, and that's when they came up with Step 7, which is the constitutional supremacy. And so, with what right after the the acceptance of the U.S. Constitution, it became the law of the United States, and it provided a balance between the federal government and the states, between the people and the government, between the three forms of government, and provided for the rights of the people, which are the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which, was des which is described, and we'll talk more about this later on, is that the, the, the right to happiness is the right to pursue and use your own property. Now, there's an eighth step. And the eighth step is what the founders wanted us to go for. And we have not been able to do it. Um, it started, but it's become corrupted because people have altered it. But the eighth step is real manifest destiny which is when the philosophy of the U.S. Constitution 
would spread from one end of the world to the other, and that the, it would never come by force, it would never come by war. All we are doing right now is spreading war and destruction across the world, causing people to suffer. And are we even giving them the real constitution? We're not. We are giving them democracy. We are not supposed to be democracy. We are supposed to be a de democratic republic. And if we do not return those to those principles, then we will never be able to fill our destiny. But I know that we will because more and more people are coming to understand that the U.S. Constitution with its protection of the people to protect the, our lives, our liberty, and our per ability to pursue what makes us happy. Now this is the purpose of this video series, the School of the U.S. Constitution. I hope that you will subscribe and continue to stay with us. Please feel free to share this and comment and you can start discussions on our forum on our website free citizens free citizens of alameda.webs.com and help to support our growing movement so that we can reunite Alameda County under the principles that the founders given us thank you so much for your time and uh, have a good day